Functions often come defined as quotients. So let's just write that word down, quotients. So functions come defined as quotients, by which we mean we have one function, cos x, let's say, divided by another function. Cos x divided by x squared. What we do is we identify that as one function, u, divided by another function, v. This then gives us yet another result, another formula that we need to be able to remember. This one goes v, u by dx, minus u dv by dx, all over v squared. Now, it looks a very complicated formula, but it's not really. You just have to remember the minus sign. And I must say, the way that I always remember it is, if anything's going to go wrong with anything, it's going to be what's in the denominator. So when we do the derivative, we're going to have to have a minus sign. Let's have a look how this formula is going to work with this particular example. So, let's have a look at this example. y equals cos x over x squared. And we've identified this as being u over v, u divided by v. So, u is cos x and v is x squared. We can write down their derivatives. du by dx is minus sine x, and dv by dx is 2x. Quote the formula. dy by dx is v du by dx minus u dv by dx, all over v squared. Again, we're quoting the formula every time, because that way we get to remember it, we get to know it. Equals. And now we can plug in the various bits that we've got. So v will be x squared times by du by dx. So that's times by minus sine x minus, because of the minus that there is in the formula, and then we want u, which is cos x, times by, and we want dv by dx, which is 2x. And then all over v squared. And in this case, v is x squared, so that's x squared all squared. Now, again, this doesn't look very nice. It, it needs tidying up. We need to gather things together. So, if I turn over the page and write this expression again at the top of the page. So, writing that down again, dy by dx is equal to x squared times minus sine x minus cos x times 2x all over x squared squared. OK, we need to simplify this. Look again for the common factor. And there's an x there in the x squared. There's a minus sign there, a minus sign there, and an x there. So from each term, we can take out the minus sign and the x. And on top, that will leave us with x sine x plus, and it must be a plus now because we've taken the minus sign out, plus, and here we've got 2 cos x left all over and now x squared all squared is x to the power 4. Having done that, 
we can see that there's now a factor of x common to both the top, the numerator, and to the bottom, the denominator. So we can divide the top and the bottom by x in order to simplify it. So the minus sign stays, minus x sine x plus 2 cos x all over x cubed. And we can leave it like that, simplified in that way. And that's useful because now if we wanted to, we could go on and put it equal to zero, and we could sort out maxima and minima and all that kind of thing. So it's always helpful to try and rearrange these expressions, particularly to get the top in a simplified form. Notice, though, that we didn't cancel any of these x's in here. They're part of the sine x. They're part of the variables. You can't just go cancelling them out. You can only cancel those out which are common factors. Let's take a, a second example. This time, let's take it one that's just got uh, polynomial functions of x in. So we've got x squared plus 6 all over 2x minus 7. Just polynomials, no cosas, no sines, etc. So this is a u over v, a quotient again. Let's line this one up. u equals x squared, and so du by dx will be 2x. v is 2x minus 7, and so dv by dx is just 2. Quote the formula, y equals v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared. Now we've quoted the formula, we're now in a position to be able to substitute in the various pieces that we need. So, dy by dx is equal to, now this is v du by dx, so that's 2x minus 7 times by du by dx, which is 2x, minus u, which was x squared plus 6, times dv by dx, which was just 2. And this is all over v squared. So it's all over 2x minus 7 squared. Now again, we need to think about this one. We need to simplify it. We need to get together the various terms. And if we look, there's a common factor of 2 there and there. So we can take that 2 out as a common factor and put it at the front. So we have 2, and then when we multiply out with x times by 2x, that gives us 2x squared. x times by 7 gives us minus 7x. Then we have minus this, so that's minus x squared minus 6, close the bracket, all over 2x minus 7, all squared. Keep the 2 outside, and let's simplify the terms inside. x squared minus 7x minus 6, all over 2x minus 7, all squared. And that's now in a form, if we need to go on and do something else with it, we can do. The third example that I'd like to do with you is one where we're going to use this result in order to help us establish something new. Now we're going to use this result to help us prove another result. So let's begin with y equals tan x. It's a standard function. So we want to be able to differentiate it in a standard way. We want a result we can use and just keep on using it. So we've got to begin 
with the definition of tan x. And tan x is defined as being sin x over cos x. And of course, that's now a quotient, isn't it? That's now u over v. And because we've been able to identify the u over v, then we can have u equals sine x. And so du by dx will be cos x. We've got v equals cos x. And so dv by dx will be minus sine x. Lots of cosses and sines about, so we need to be very, very careful when we do the substitution. Let's quote the formula. dy by dx is v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared. Now we're going to make this substitution. So let's just work our way through that. dy by dx will be, now it's v du by dx. So v was cos x, u was sine x, so its derivative is cos x. Minus, from the formula, u dv by dx. Now, u was sine x, and dv by dx, well, v was cos x, so dv by dx is minus sine x. All over v squared, and v was cos x, so that's all over cos squared x. We now need to simplify the top, so we have cos x times by cos x, so that's cos squared x. We have a minus and a minus sign, so that's going to give us a plus. And we've sine x times by sine x, so we've sine squared x, all over cos squared x equals. Now, this is a standard result, well-known result. Cos squared plus sine squared is always equal to 1. Cos squared x plus sine squared x is 1. So that's 1 over cos squared x. And, of course, we have another way of writing 1 over cos squared. 1 over cos x we usually write as being sec x. So 1 over cos squared x we would write as sec squared x x. And so that's how we differentiate tan. And now we've got a standard result that the derivative of tangent is sec squared x. We can simply quote that and use it any time that we want to. We take one more example of using this in the same sort of way. Let's take the function y equals sec x. Now, we know the definition of sec x. It's 1 over cos x. One of the ways of doing this now is to realise that this is a quotient. It's a u over v. Having identified those, we can say u equals 1, and so du by dx will be equal to... Now, 1 is just a constant. So remember, a constant is about rate of... A derivative is about rate of change. So if we differentiate something which is constant, its rate of change must be zero. V is cos x, and so dv by dx will be minus sine x. And again, our formula is dy by dx is equal to v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared. So we're going to make the substitution now. This is going to change things slightly. If du by dx is 0, when we start multiplying by 0, some odd things may happen. So, 
dy by dx is v du by dx. Now remember, v was cos x times du by dx. That was 0 because u was 1. Minus u, that's 1, times by dv by dx. Now remember, v was cos x, and so its derivative is minus sin x. And then all over v squared, which is cos squared x. So what we've got, cos x times by 0 is 0. Anything times by 0 is 0. And a minus minus gives us a plus, and so we've got sin x over cos squared x. Looks, looks like it might be something else. And remember that we, we've just seen that tan is sine over cos. So I can write this as 1 over cos x times sine x over cos x. Here, I've got 1 over cos is sec x times sine over cos, which is tan x. So I end up with the result that the derivative of sec x is sec x tan x. So, any time we want to use the derivative of sec x, we can do so. All we do is we just write it straight down. Sec x, tan x, and that's it. We don't have to work it all out again. And that's the end of quotients.